up, everybody? It's your favorite fan arts, favorite nerd. And today we are looking at a Marvel Scorponok homemade by Marcin Star. So he did a set of replacement thighs for Hot Rod for me, I think, that we looked at in the past. He hit me up again and said he's been working on this Marvel comic Scorponok and he'd love for me to take a look at it. I was actually apprehensive. I was like, look, I don't want to break this thing or whatever. He was like, dude, I don't care. He's like, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm going to make more and I'll, I'll learn something from how it breaks. Let me say this as a disclaimer. This is not meant to be a figure. This is like an art piece to me. This is like a piece of fan art. And I think it's worth looking at because I admire passion and I admire people doing it on their own. He sent me a letter to go along with it. I'm going to read some of it to you. He says, I made the scale to fit with Takara Legends Power Master Optimus Prime, but since the project is made fully in 3D, it can be 3D printed at a bigger or smaller scale. The figure is held by plastic pins visible at the side of the leg that can be removed if they become too loose in exchange for a new one. There's a possibility to create some ratchets. I know you prefer them, but it adds complexity to the project at this stage, and I hope that if this ever gets mass produced, they will be implemented. He says, since it was 3D printed, there were some compromises that had to be made. For example, the said leg pins and some bars that hold the claw fingers in place. They could be made as one piece if this was an injection mold, but they are separate. Said it took him about a month of doing it after hours from the idea to what you see in front of you. In the future, he would hope that the figures could be designed like this and be sold as do-it-yourself files packs so that everyone could make them at home. 3D printers are becoming more common and reliable, so perhaps this is a viable option for collectors. He's making a limited run, give or take 10, to prove that it can be recreated, but for the future, he would like to focus on designing rather than production. And he's listed some fragile parts and stuff like that. Look, I'm going to handle this thing with kid gloves and try not to break it. I, I initially said, I, he was like, you can keep it and I was like man I'll send it back to you but like I'm so kind of in awe by it just that somebody made this at home you know that I kind of want to keep it I'll have to, see, have to see how he feels now but let's take a look at the accessories and then we'll put them together we'll talk about them we'll transform him and we'll so move on so he sent me this extra stuff to make this marvelous prime I don't know I guess this is a titan's returns or I mean um See, I don't know what this is, but you get two guns and they're sculpted very nicely. I like this extra little like scope piece here and it looks like these swivel or hinge. So well, maybe they don't, they just come loose, but um, I don't know. It's nice enough sculpt. And then there's a couple of other pieces here. I don't know what this does. I don't have this figure and then a different head that actually looks a little thin to me, like a little skinny and a little wide, but I, I, I don't know much about the character, so maybe maybe it's more spot on than I care to admit. He comes with these, which I believe are replacement missiles for the shoulder pieces, and they're just sculpted and put in a bag. That's the pin that's fragile there, if you can see. Comes with the head, which is nice. I wonder if that's glow in the dark. Let me see. No, I don't think so. Looks like it could be, though. And... Uh, the, the it's all different colors of plastic, right? Like that is, but it's just all put together. Nice enough sculpt, though. I mean, it looks just like the comic character to me. And then you get some interchangeable pieces, replacement horns. You get these two faces that are screaming, one in the kind of glow-in-the-dark look, and then one in the gray look, and then one of the more standard-issue faces in the gray look. And you also get a swap-out chest piece with the Decepticon symbol kind of printed on. So assembly-wise, in terms of how it came anyway, you just take the head, put it on. It's a ball peg, so you saw that. We'll take a look at the figure here in a second. Um, I just wanted to show you the the, the, the kind of overview of this guy real quick. It's pretty impressive, man. Like, that's, that's passion. You know, I, I dig passion. So let's talk about the figure. We got the different color plastics here, the orange, the gray, the white, and the red, or the glow in the dark, and it sits on a ball peg. Um, as a result, this piece slides down. The head can get down to there, up to there, and then the swivel, confused dog look. You do get a, a waist swivel, so that's nice. Then for the chest itself, there's orange plastic, gray plastic, purple plastic, and then this is a sticker on top. The shoulders are basically a universal, like a double universal joint. So they swivel inside the chest and then they hinge outside, the, outside in the shoulder and they also hinge right here. And I'm trying to, you kind of have to like almost get this up a little bit. I don't want to, but I mean, you get a little bit of range for sure. And then also push this down. You can swivel here inside the chest. Then this piece, the cannons, they also swivel. So you can kind of have them where you'd like them as well. You get a bicep swivel that is a little tight. Let's see. 
There it is. And then you get an elbow. Now, I'm just giving him feedback. I'm not really being critical for the sake of being critical, but if this... Oh, look at that. It's a double-jointed elbow. Never mind. Never mind. That gets you 90 degrees. Disregard. I had I had something. I thought I had something for messing around with it, but it was, just must have been stuck. Then the fingers do open up at the base here. Like this piece moves and this piece moves. This is like an orange sticker or something it looks like inside or a little thin piece of plastic. And then the fingers individually articulate as well. Pretty fascinating. And then we have the hip skirts. They flip up for the universals that he uses for hips, which gets you forward and back to there. Right, and it's not really, that's not really quite accurate. It's more like to there without pushing it. And then out to the side for a much wider range. You get a thigh swivel, a double jointed knee that gets you the full run. Purple plastic, purple plastic, green plastic, gray plastic with these like little strips. I don't know what these are. And then the feet are on ball peg. So you get a little bit of an, oh, you get a huge ankle tilt down. And it's, I think it's just a little loose in there you're not supposed to get that much and then a little bit of an ankle rocker and then the tail you can kind of do a thousand and one things with depending on your sensibilities all of this stuff extends and contracts i just don't want to put too much stress on the guy we'll take a quick look at accessories here and then move on but i tell you i am blown away like the sculpt just feels like the old marvel comics like to a t like this guy found a niche that nobody was doing and did it pretty well from his basement or his office or wherever he's doing this. And it's 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 kind of satisfying a part of the fandom that like the Marvel Comics fandom is pretty passionate and nobody's really going that route. And he did it and it's pretty good. It is a little back heavy. Like a, it's it's hard to get him to be kind of balanced. But um once again, that's just a little feedback, not necessarily a criticism. Size comparison wise, there it is with an MP car. So it's it's a big robot. So let's get him transformed. And I'm just gonna go step by step and be extra cautious. Cause he brought, he gave me instructions. I'm just gonna do exactly what it says to the best of my ability. So step one is to lift this entire section up. Step two is to rotate the arms forward. Step three is to slide the scorpion legs down. Step four is to extend the tail all on double hinges step five is to rotate this piece 180 degrees six is to rotate the arms up seven is slide down eight is to slide the scorpion legs up nine is to rotate the waist 180 degrees ten is to extend the scorpion legs Eleven is to rotate these calf flaps up, rotate the feet down, and they'll sit in these little channels, and then slide the feet up inside the calf. And then you can close your covers. Rotate the legs out and bend 90 degrees at the upper joint. Bring the tail down between the two. You can then rotate the legs back onto themselves and collapse them around the tail and these two pieces will peg together. You can then bring the tail up and it will actually stop in these channels of the calves. Make sure that your knee joint is 90, 90 degrees aligned at each bend. Rotate your cannons, position your tail, you can lift your cannons up and rotate your Decepticon symbol 180 degrees. I'll get them cleaned up, we'll take a look at them. How bloody cool is that? I'm like, I'm, in, I'm, I'm taken back by this dude. Like to me, this is like, you know, I'm, I'm not judging this like I'm judging a, a main retail release, right? Like a, a guy that's working with a factory. I'm judging this based on a guy working on a passion project in his house. It's like me drawing a picture or something. Like this is fan art, this is incredible. So you obviously you saw that the cannons can swivel up and down and hinge, the tail moves all around and then the arms have the same kind of articulation that we already talked about and then the legs can swivel back and forth and then you can kind of move the head as we've already talked about as well. So 
What you see is kind of what you get. There's not a whole lot new to discuss in this mode, but like, it's pretty impressive, no? Like, it's pretty cool. And there it is next to Tiger Tracks. Well, final thoughts wise, let's just talk about this for a second. We're not gonna do criticisms. We're gonna talk about stuff we could improve on, recommendations. So the one thing that always sticks out to me with 3D printed stuff is the, the lines, like the layers of plastic that's being kind of dumped onto it. I don't know if the technology has moved beyond that yet or not. I just feel like everything I get this 3D printed always has it, and so does this. To be fair, this is more subtle than some of the pieces I've seen, but it's still there. The other thing I would suggest that he look into is engineering. And what I mean by that is hardware. To design the arms, body, legs, etc., and then look into buying large quantities of hardware that you could insert into the build of the figure that would just improve the articulation and stability. And also, of course, like he's not trying to sell a whole ton of these, but you know, he might want to consider throwing some paint on this bad boy. He's obviously passionate about it. Just maybe throw a little bit more in there. Give him some love. Get your Rain Man on for those that know. One six collectors. Positives though, man, I don't even know where to begin. Like I'm I'm in awe. Like I'm in awe of the passion. I'm in awe of the engineering. You know, just I mean, this guy's just doing it on his own and that, you know, like the like the sculpt, like he obviously loves it, like the love and care like comes across in it. And like I don't really view this as a figure, you know what I mean? I, I view this more so as like a piece of art, you know, and if he'll uh, still allow me, I, I would love to display this just because I'm I'm really speechless and look, I, I I don't want to come off a way or sound away, but like, you know, you get a lot of people that hit you up from time to time and they, they, they say stuff that they're working on or that they're doing and, you know, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm always honestly interested to take a look at that stuff, but you get a little numb to it after a while, you know, and you're just kind of like, yeah, no, uh, yeah, no, I'm sure it's great. I'm sure. But this one really, it, it, I mean, I'm, I'm, it really took me by surprise. Like, it's just far beyond what I was expecting. I was expecting it to kind of be a mess. You know, and, and don't get me wrong, there's, it's, it definitely isn't professional, you know? But like, he's not a professional. He's not trying to be a professional. Like, it's not the same, you know? And, and it's not trying to be anything that it's not. It's trying to be exactly what it is, and what it is, honestly, is inspiring. So well done. A link to his email will be in the description of this video. You know, at least put the guy on your radar as somebody to look out for in the future, because I think if he sticks with this, he's got a pretty impressive one coming. And by one, I mean future. Bravo. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.